Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm pretending to be Keith Floyd and I'm going to cook something from his book, Floyd on France, so that should be fun. I'm going to make Alsatian liver dumplings. As you may know, I'm a great admirer of the late, great Keith Floyd, who left us about almost 15 years ago now, um, which is a tragedy, but I guess he had a fabulous life, so there you go. And in fact, that's why I start nearly every video with greetings gastronauts, and I stole gast gastronauts from him. Uh, he invented it, not me. So the reason I'm doing this is that uh, Mrs. Keith Cooks is going to France next week for 10 days on her own. Um, and she's got brothers and sisters over there, she'll be fine, she'll have a great time. I'm not going because I just started this new job and I don't get any holiday entitlement, so I'll just have to look after myself. <laughs> so she was, was looking for sort of French language things on the telly and found Floyd on France, the whole series on BBC iPlayer, which if you don't live in the UK, you can't watch it, the EPN. But the clip of this particular recipe from the series is on YouTube, so I'll put a link down there, up there, somewhere, because uh, it's quite amusing. All right, the recipe itself, I, I don't really know why I'm doing it, but um, I, I enjoy watching the clip of them trying to make it and messing up in a spectacular fashion, a bit like what I do. So yeah, maybe that's what it was. And it comes from the Alsace region of France, which is up there in the northeast corner. Um, bordering Germany and I guess the people from there are called Alsatians. Anyway, if you enjoy this video give it a like, share, subscribe etc and let's get on with it. Alsatian liver dumplings. Ingredients for the liver dumplings I've got 200 grams of pork liver, 100 grams of smoked pork belly, you could use bacon but really what we're after is the fat. This is the closest I could get, it's a Polish thing from Tesco. <laughs> One medium onion, 40 grams of bread flour or semolina flour, a couple of cloves of garlic, two eggs, two slices of bread that have been soaking in milk, small handful of parsley, small handful of tarragon, pinch of salt, some pepper, white pepper, and a grating of nutmeg. Okay, is that everything? I think so. Let's get on with it. Notice in true Floyd fashion, I've got my dicky bow on, and uh, not wearing a pinny. He's, he quite often wears, you know, the full evening dress kind of jacket thing and uh, does his cooking and never splashes anything on himself. It's quite remarkable. First thing to do is mince the garlic. Then we need to finely dice the onion. Ready? Now we need to saute these, just get them sort of soft, translucent, not browned, before we make up the rest of the mixture. And I forgot, how can you have old fashioned French cooking without a ton of butter? Melt a generous amount of butter in a frying pan on medium low heat, and then add the onions and let those cook for about five minutes, very gently. And then add the minced garlic and give that a couple more minutes. As a cooked onion and garlic, and I'll just put it on a, a plate to cool down. Now I'm going to chop up my smoked belly pork or my bacon into tiny little cubes. Just cut the rind off, we don't want that. All right, now we need to chop the liver. So it's a bit, it's a bit kind of slippy and slimy. <laughs> it won't stay still. Anyway, you don't want to watch this, come back later. Okay, I'm not worrying too much about chopping that too finely because I'm going to whiz it through the uh, food processor. It could get a bit messy though. Okay, bit of a blast. Splendid! Now we can add uh, other things to our melange. I'll put the onions in as well. A 
Kiefer user's brain. <laughs> oh, honestly. What a lark. Might as well sling everything else in. The bread needs to be squeezed <laughs> to get rid of all the milk. Okay, I'll just finally chop the herbs, my uh, tarragon. You could use chervil instead of tarragon. I mean, in fact, that's what Floyd uses, but I don't have any, but I do have a tarragon plant. And now we need to beat the eggs. <laughs> So now we can hurl everything else into the mix. So that's the tarragon, the parsley, the eggs. Give that a quick mix. And then some pepper, the flour, and some nutmeg. Okay, whiz it all up again. And I'll just transfer that to a bowl and stick that in the fridge and let it rest for a while. I'm actually going out, so <laughs> it'll be a couple of hours before I get back. Now, before I cook the actual liver dumplings, I need to start making a little sauce. And in the Floyd video, he's doing this in a professional kitchen. And so obviously there's a stock pot full of demi glass, uh, which you just grab a ladle full of for your sauce. Um, this is not a professional kitchen. I don't have such a thing as a, a huge stock pot of wonderful umaminess kicking around. But I have got a can of beef consomme. So what I'm going to do is put that in a pan and whack it on the stove and reduce it uh, until it's about a quarter of this volume, which might take a while. <laughs> Woo! So I'm going to try that onion cutting technique that I really don't get on with, but uh, maybe it'll work on this. I've cut one end off and I've got the tail end still intact. And what you do is, well, let's do it horizontally first, I think, very carefully so you don't cut into your fingers. That's why I don't like it, because you're cutting towards yourself, which isn't ever safe, really. Cut horizontally and vertically and I know you know the likes of Gordon Ramsay or even Keith Floyd can do this in nanoseconds but I can't all right it's something like that and then you just cut down on the z-axis and uh, you've got tiny little bits those that need to be sauteed in butter till they're soft but not browned it's afternoon now, so I can do a bit more realistic Floydianness. Here's my little liver dumplings. All right, I'm going to start making the sauce. So, get your butter melty melty. That's quite hot. This is the uh, the wonderfulness of induction hobs. They're very quick. They're almost, you know, well, pretty much as quick as gas, I would say. And hoi the shallots in. Now we add about a glass of white wine. Turn that up high and reduce it to almost nothing. I need to save a bit for the sauce at the end when, when we're finished. So there it is, almost gone. And we have the reduced beef consomme. Now, what's odd about this is there's there's no there's no herbs, there's no bay leaf, there's no salt and pepper or anything. Um, actually, it won't eat salt. That is salty already. That stock. Right, I think I'll, I'll turn it down because we don't want to reduce this to naught. All right, I'll set that aside and we'll finish it off when we're ready. But now I want a load of water in this pan simmering. We're going to poach our liver dumplings in that. Here's the mixture, here's the spoon. What do you think you do? The, all you do is mold those into little tiny shapes and steam them or boil them in barely simmering water. And they become delicious. And I have no confidence in this dish at all, I can tell you that. Have a look at what Floyd did wrong. <laughs> and now we're going to see what kind of a fool I can possibly make of myself by putting this liquid mixture into here. 
and it's bound just to separate into a whole... Oh, no, it's not. Look, it is... Hey, it's working. This is incredible. Now, how do I get the damn thing off the spoon? That's what I'm not so sure about. Chef. Chef. Je suis dans le mail. So you don't just plop it in. You have to have a wet spoon and slide the mixture off it into the water. And then that should work. Right, I'll, I'll just do those four and they need to sit in there, poach in there for 10 minutes. Right, happy days. Those are cooked. So I'll just take them out the water. Floyd says, uh, so we're going to make it beautiful. The presentation of the dishes, it's just not what we do now. It's not, it's just um, a bit rubbish really. <laughs> and then he plops some chopped tomato. I've got to say it looks revolting, but anyway, uh, let's finish off the sauce. So I'll bring that back up to temperature and and melt in a knob of butter, burr. And this, this sauce looks a bit runny to me, but he doesn't, um, Floyd doesn't add any corn flour or anything to thicken it. And uh, he also doesn't strain out the uh, shallots, so it's kind of lumpy. But anyway, I'm sure it'll taste marvellous. It does. <laughs> also got a few little potatoes. Oh, I could do presentation, couldn't I? I could put one in each space. Yes. Cool. I mean, actually, what I should do is have some, some choucroute, which is uh, is basically the French version of uh, sauerkraut. But it takes two weeks to make, so not this week. Right, here's the, the little sauce. Oh, one thing you must do. Apparently, is put that last splash of wine in. Let's check. <laughs> mm. Pull that over the uh, dumplings and things. I chopped some chives, so uh, I should actually use them. Taste test time, and well, it looks interesting. Nice tomato. I'm sorry that took so long. I'm trying to discern any flavour in the dumpling thing and I can't find any. It doesn't taste of anything. It's just, it's not like some kind of mousse. I see, you know, it's very light. Sorry, if I have a fault, it's being too honest. I can't, I couldn't tell you what that tastes like. I get, I get, yeah. It's not unpleasant, but damn it, I've spent all day making that. <laughs> I want something sensational. Ooh, I bet these spuds are good. Yeah, they are. And that sauce. Actually, the sauce is um, also not the greatest thing ever. It's, it's kind of vinegary. From, from the wine. Okay, look, Alsace, I'm sorry. That's not good. Uh... Okay, it's the next day and uh, I'm in a slightly better mood. <laughs> so yesterday when Mrs. Keith Cooks came home from work, she had a little taste of this, well, actually, she had all of it, <laughs> uh, except for this bit, and she, she she didn't mind it. She didn't think it was the greatest thing ever. Uh, but she, what she ended up doing was spreading it on toast, like pate. And that gave me an idea. So if you recall, I had half a bowl, more than half a bowl of the mixture left. Um, so I'm going to turn that into pate. Okay, so I'll do it in this loaf tin. I think we'll have enough to just about fill it. All right, uh, I'll, I'll put this gravy which is kind of well, it's jellyfied and that's that's going to be really savoury so I'll mix that in with the, the liver mixture and also the remains of the sauce with the bits of shallot in 
and I would have wanted to add more salt, but that um, that sauce is very salty already, so we'll skip that, but we'll add more pepper. And a bit more nutmeg. I'm just gonna bust the inside of my loaf tin. And then I've got some smoked back bacon and I'll just kind of line it with that. Actually streaky would be better. So this is just what I've got in the fridge. Now I'll just spoon in the mixture. Okay, and I was a bit optimistic with how much of this I've got. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll just close it off at this point and I'll, I'll fill that space with my baking rice. Okay, I think if I kind of line it with foil, it should be okay. So that's... All right, I think that'll do. And then just fold over the bits of bacon and usually what you do with this kind of patty is, is compress it, just put a weight on it and like leave it in the fridge, possibly overnight, but I don't think I'll do that. So we need to cook it, and usually that's done in an oven using a bain-marie. Right, so a bain-marie is basically, it's a vessel containing hot or boiling water into which you put the smaller vessel containing the stuff that you want to cook. So conveniently, this large loaf tin is big enough to accommodate this small loaf tin with plenty of space around it for the water. So I'll just boil the kettle. Oh, also I'm gonna cover the top with um, some foil just to stop it burning. I know I said I wasn't gonna compress it in the fridge, but I am going to put this other loaf tin on top and it's got the rest of my boiling rice and that'll just stop it from swelling up like a loaf of bread. I've got the oven heated to 180 degrees Celsius for a fan oven convection oven da -de -da -de -da. And that's 200 for a convention one, and that's gas six. So we'll put our bain-marie assemblage in the oven and then leave it in there for about an hour. And then we'll have a look and see if it's cooked. All right, time's up, let's have a look. Okay, the internal cook temperature for pate is 68 degrees Celsius. So let's see what we've got. Much more than that. <laughs> so that's cooked. Now we need to leave it to cool down and then we'll see if we can get it out of the tin and uh, taste it. We do need to get it out of the Dan Marie thing otherwise it'll just keep on cooking forever. Okay that's uh, pretty cool so let's see if we can get it out. Get the rice out first. Let's get the pate out. Nice and easy. Yeah. Okay, I think that looks all right. Let's slice it open and try a bit. Let's cut it open. Look at that. That looks like pate to me. Okay, there it is. Let's uh, have a taste. Taste those time. Got some toasted white bread. Don't ask me why. Well, it's because I've run out of the, the beautiful CD wholemeal stuff that I've been making. There it goes. That's more like it. That's really tasty. Mmm. Okay, please with that. I think I've snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Yes. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.